put your hands together. Come on.
straight from the heart of God to you this morning. And it's a reminder that you've never been alone for a second of your life. That no matter what's happened to you, you can look back and know that God was there in the midst of your storm. Amen? You and I We go way, way back. We go way, way back. See you and I. Got history. Yeah, we go way, way back. We go way, way back. 
For eons I thought about you Before I ever made you I wrote every moment down You were all my idea Above all I created You were my most precious crown Cause you and I got history Yeah, we go way, way back We go way, way back See so you and I we got history Yeah, we go way, way back We go way, way back I say words just to say to you Before you ever met me Take some time and hear them now I gave you my greatest gift My love cannot be measured You're my treasure, you're my child Yeah, Cause you and I We got history Oh, we go way, way back Way back, see you and I. Got history. Yeah, we go way, way back. We go way, way back. You and I. That was me this morning. Na 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 na. Say it again. Yeah. Na 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 na. Oh. Na 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 na. Never gonna let you go. Never gonna let you go. Never gonna let you go. I never have, I never will, I'm never gonna let you go, no. I'm never gonna let you go, no. I'm never gonna let you go, no. I never have, I never will, I'm never gonna let you go, no.
Nothing can separate us from the love of God. Oh, don't you know, don't you know. Sing this with me one more time. Na na na, na 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 na. Little love song to the Lord this morning. Help me out. Na na na, na 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 na. Sing it again, yeah. Na na na, na 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 na. Yeah. Na na na, na 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 na. song to Jesus this morning. Na, na, na. going to focus on Jesus for the next minute. Oh, you're so worthy of our praise. What a wonderful, wonderful Savior. He's my deliverer. Oh, he's my healer. Nothing can separate, nothing can separate us. Oh, don't you know how much you love? If 
Lord, we move on today. I want to impart to you that Jesus loves you. And recognizing that fact will change your life and will change your worship. Not that he loves the world. Not that he loves everybody. Not that he just loves good people. But he loves you personally. He knows you by name. He knows everything you've done. And he is madly in love with you. And this is a concept that I still do not fully understand. Because it makes no sense. Because I know me. I'm not worthy of the love of God. But daily he lavishes it upon me and pours it out upon me over and 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 over. His mercies are new every day. He pours it out. He pours it out. His goodness and his, the undeserved favor of God is poured out on my life. And I don't know why. I don't know why. But it's not my job to know why. It's my job to receive. It's my job to accept. And it's my job to respond accordingly. How do we respond accordingly? We're doing it right now. Praise and worship is the proper response. So for 60 seconds, we're just going to bless the name of Jesus. We're going to thank Him for His love. Thank Him for His goodness. Thank Him for His blood. Thank Him for forgiveness of sin. We're not going to focus on anyone else or anything else. We're not moving on for one minute. So wherever you are, if you have a song in your mouth that you want to sing to Jesus, if you have a prayer in your heart that you want to speak to Jesus, this is your moment. It's just you and Jesus right now. Let's not move on, okay? We're going to play this song for just a little bit longer. This is for you and Jesus. Don't let anyone distract you from this moment. Don't let anything else interrupt this moment between you and Jesus, okay? Yeah, we love you, we love you. than a brother What a good God If you had an encounter with Jesus right now, just lift your hands. We're just going to play bless his, bless his name. Thank you, Jesus. Y'all can keep playing. Jesus, we thank you for your presence. We thank you for your goodness. We thank you that you are here in the building with us today. You're here to meet our needs. And God, we just ask you to be blessed by our worship. Let the words of our mouth be glorifying to you, God. Let us be reflections of your light and your glory in this dark and dying world around us. Oh, let your name be glorified, God. Let your will be done. 
We ask all these things in the mighty name of Jesus. Everyone said amen. Amen, amen. Have a seat. Amen. Can we go ahead and give God some praise because he's in the building this morning? Amen. We're so glad that y'all are here this morning at Fellowship of the Nations. And so we just greet you and uh, hope that and pray that you feel part of our church family by the time that you leave. And so um, as we continue our service, this is the part that we call our tithes and offerings where we get to give back to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. So um, we pray that your heart is cheerful um, as you give unto the Lord and uh, walking in obedience. And basically what the word says and what we believe is that 10% of everything we make belongs to the Lord. And uh, so we don't want to have tight grip on what this world has to offer us, but we want to be open and obedient to what the Lord has destined for us. Amen. So whether you're giving online at FOTN.org, through a text mobile giving, or through the envelope in front of you, I, we just want to encourage you to be obedient and to walk in that. And so let's go ahead and pray this morning. God, we just first want to confess and just tell you once more, Lord, that we love you so much, Father, and, and we consider it an honor that we get to be in fellowship with you, Lord, and that your spirit is dwelling in us and around us, God, and, and as you're doing that, Lord, I pray that you would soften our heart and move our heart into a position where we are compelled and cheerful and uh, just so ready to give back to you, God, and so I thank you, Lord, that the way you define treasure has nothing to do with this world, but treasure is exactly Exactly what we find in you alone, Lord. And so we just consider the riches of this world, our bank account, our, our cars, and everything else, Lord. We just consider it secondhand treasure to the true treasure that we find in you. So we thank you for your heart. I thank you that your heart is turned towards us this morning. And so I pray, Lord, that as we honor you, that we would turn our hearts towards you, Father, in a posture not just to give, but also to receive as we walk in obedience. And so uh, may this offering this morning bless your heart and glorify your name. And again, we love you so much. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. And all God's people said, amen. amen. Thank you. So glad you're here. If you're wondering where a lot of our women are, they are at a ladies' retreat. So if you're here for the first time and you're looking around going, not too many women here in this church. Well, 
They're all at a retreat. They're coming in after a while. So uh, anyway, they've had a great time. And uh, I welcome you. If you're here for the first time, we greet you in the name of Jesus. Welcome to Fellowship of the Nations. And uh, we're just a Jesus church. So we're not a denomination. We're just all about Jesus. So uh, he's the one that saved us, redeemed us, set us free. So we, we're going to lift his name up. He's the pastor of this church. So uh, anyway, everybody doing good? All right. I know we had a lot of sickness, but man, we're praying for healing. Healing in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Well, listen, let's say a big hello to those who are watching online this morning. Thank you for being with us. We appreciate, appreciate our online congregation. Anybody got the word? Word up. word up. Let's hold it in the air like we really, really care. Say it together. In the beginning was the word. The word was with God. The word was God. It is a lamp to my feet, a light to my path. I will hide his word in my heart so that I might not sin against God. Holy Spirit, give me ears to hear and strength to obey. In Jesus' name, hallelujah. Amen, amen. Well, we started last week a, a new series. It's called Prison Break. And, uh, and this break is to let us out of the prison. And what happens is when we go in life, there's enough stuff that's going to, last week we talked about labels. And there could have been all types of labels that have been put on us that have held us down. You know, we're either a failure or we're lazy or we're a hothead or, or whatever, you know, something may have happened in our life. And, and we just live our life according to some label that was put on us when the Bible says that we are fearfully and wonderfully made. That you're not a piece of junk, that you are a masterpiece made by the master creator. So that's how important you are. So we want you to, to be set free from that. No matter what your past is, no matter where you have been, what you've done, any of that stuff, what God is saying to you is, I have put a new label on you. It's called redeemed. You're my child. And so we talked about that last week. This week, what we want to talk about, and I will say up front, it is a very sensitive subject. You saw just a, a part of it. I mean, we just got the, uh, the message preached to us. But we want to talk about unforgiveness. Every single one of us, here have been, we've been hurt in some way, some measure in our life. And I want to say this is very sensitive, and I want to say I want to validate your pain. Because we have people, they'll, they'll come in here, you have been, and let's, we're just going to get totally honest. Is that okay? Can we just roll with it? Okay. Some of you have, have been through a lot of hurt, and um, some of you have been in, in, in situations where it's been very, very traumatic. You've been in situations where there have, there have been molestation. You've been in situations maybe you've been raped. Uh, you've been abandoned. Uh, a lot of different things may have happened in your life. But I want to tell you, today we want to take you to a place, not for you to stay in a certain place and it, you camp out there for the rest of your life because we all need to experience this, uh, this forgiveness and we need to forgive as God has forgiven us. Amen? So I just want to talk about a few of those things as we are uh, rolling today and uh, just try to just make sure that if we're going to go to the next level, we cannot, we cannot let this baggage hang on to our lives. And uh, it, it's, it's so important that we, we uh, learn. So how, how do we forgive those who have hurt us? Well, our first response can be, I don't want to. You with me? Man, you don't know what they did to me, and I, I don't want to forgive them. You know, that guy was horrible, man, or this girl was horrible, man. You know, they left me and they cheated on me. And they did all these kinds of things. And, you know, I don't want to forgive them. I want to hang on to it. Well, that may be your response, but after today, you're going to let it go. After today, God is going to set you free. All right? So are we going to be in agreement with that? So we'll talk about this, whether it's hurts that are intentional, betrayal, or unintentional mishaps, whatever those things are. I understand that you have been through some hurts that hardly anybody in here could, could relate to. I know, I know your story. I have talked with many of you. I know where you've been. I know what's happened to you. I know what's, what's been going on. This message is for you. It's for all of us. And so I want you to grab a hold of that. Here's, here's what we see, because when I mention this word, forgive, you need to forgive others. Some of you are thinking, oh, man, why is he going there? Why does he want to talk about that? And the reason is you've got a hurt that's right up here. It's, it's fresh. There's a fresh wound that's there. If 
that may not be you. Maybe you're the one on the other side of it who you got hurt a long time ago, and what you've done is you have just pressed it down. You have learned to function with unforgiveness that's just kind of packed down there. And what it's doing is it's like, it's like an ulcer, and it's just eating away at you. And every once in a while, something's going to trigger and something's going to happen, and, 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 and there's, there's going to be that, that explosion of emotions, and that scab's going to be taken off, and all of a sudden, you're going to be screaming at people, and usually it's the ones who are innocent. Maybe your children or your spouse or something like that, and, and it, it's, it's going to come up, and you're wondering, man, why in the world am I acting this way? Why? I'm sorry. I just don't get, a, get it. What, what's, what's going on? It's because you never dealt biblically with unforgiveness. Does, that, does it make sense? Anybody know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Okay. Listen, this message, every single one of us can relate. Yeah. Every single one of us can relate to this. So we want to we wanna talk about those things. So it could be wounds from the past. Uh, it could be family wounds. Last year, in less than a month period, I counseled with five different women. Some of you may be sitting here. I'm not going to tell your story, but it's some of the most horrific situation I've ever heard. And in every one of those situations, what we find is, is they were molested either by their father, their stepfather, their grandfather, or their uncle. And you have to still go to family functions every once in a while, and you may see them. And as soon as you see them, all of a sudden, you've got this explosion that wants to go off in, in your life. All right? Now, I'm going to tell you something. Can I just be perfectly honest with you? Is that all right? Can we be perfectly honest? When I'm in a session like that and I hear that, my flesh wants to grab a baseball bat and go somewhere and find them and beat the crap out of them, all right? I mean, that, that's, just, that's just part of me because I love you guys. I want to see you healed. But that type of, of abuse, man, it just gets all over me. I don't understand that. How can somebody do that to somebody else, especially if they're 8, 9, 10 years old? And you may want me to do that, but it's not going to heal you. Does that make sense? I'll feel better about it, but it, no, I'm kidding. But it's not going to heal you. And so today, we've got to look at how things are, are going to help you and how healing is going to come in your life, all right? Just, you know, you know what I'm talking about, the sound of their name. If you hear a name and all of a sudden you, you got, you're, you haven't forgiven them, Okay. Now, there's no condemnation on you. What we're doing is we're asking Holy Spirit to bring some revelation into our lives so that he can help us forgive. And once we forgive, then he's going to take us to the next level. Okay? So, you're going you're to see what's going to happen. We don't like it. But this is what Mark eleven twenty five 25 says. Jesus said this. He says, when you stand praying or when you stand up here in the front, you know, or you're there and you're worshiping God and you're acting like everything is okay, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. And all of a sudden the Holy Spirit says, you're still hanging on to unforgiveness. When you stand praying, if you hold anything against anyone, forgive him. So that your Father in heaven may forgive you your sins. Now you see why it's important that we understand this? All right? I'm going to say this, today is a divine appointment. Some of you are here and you're thinking, man, I wasn't even expecting to come here. This was not even on my, my schedule today. Somebody talked me into coming. I was going to go do something else. I was going to fish. I was going to do something, anything besides go to church. And here you are. It's because God loves you. It's because he has been wanting for you to deal with this issue so that he can set you free. Y'all believe in divine appointments? All right, well, this is yours this morning, so hang on, all right? Look, here's, here's what happened. Anytime that I preach on unforgiveness, someone is going to come up to me after the service, or they're going to call me during the week, and they're going to say, yeah, but Pastor, you, you don't understand. You, you don't understand what happened to me. You don't understand how difficult it was and how long it lasted and what all went on, and you, you just don't understand. And I'll be the first to say, I don't. I don't understand what happened to you, but I do understand pain. I do understand pain. All right? I dated a girl for two and a half years. Right after high school, I got married. was married for five and a half years. I understand rejection. I understand being cheated on. I understand someone walking out. I understand someone divorcing me. I understand being lonely. I understand 
all of that. I understand even that some of my, quote, best friends, we weren't even divorced, that they're going after my wife. You know what I'm saying? I understand pain. I lost 25 pounds, and I wasn't even as big as I was now. I was real skinny, all right? <laughs> and then I looked really bad after that, all right? Listen, I've been there. What I am teaching you today, I had to learn myself, all right? I had to learn it myself. And once you learn it, and it becomes a part of who you are in Christ, then you're going to see that I've got victory now. I know how to, to, to make my, my peace come back to me. I know how to allow God to bring healing in my life. Okay? Are we good? All right. Some of you look at me going, oh, I don't know. Listen. Have, have, have you been like this? Are you like this? I mean, I'm just trying to set, set this up. Have you, have you been where somebody can hurt you and you can kind of deal with it you know, somewhat, you know, easily, but then, but if they hurt somebody in your family, whoo, baby, it's getting a little harder. Wait a minute, you don't do that to my dad and mama. You don't do that to my sons. Don't even think about my grandbabies. Come on, somebody, you know what I'm talking about? Hey, I mean, you know, you hurt my grandbabies. It, man, me and Jesus have a long conversation because I'm going to be asking him to forgive me for the things I did to that person. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just trying to be real with you. All right, here we go. Hurt somebody we love. Listen, some of you are dealing with the fact that you're trying to forgive someone or you're dealing with some anger hanging on to something, somebody who doesn't even live anymore. They're no longer alive. And one of, one of your struggles is you're trying to, you're mad because you never let them have it. You never gave them a piece of your mind. And here they are, they're gone, and you're struggling with it. Man, you just wish. And any time that name is, oh, boy, I wish I could give them a piece of my mind. It happens. It happens. I did a funeral, and I didn't know this until after this lady had passed away that her daughters came in. They talked about the physical abuse that this, this mother would, had given them over the years. I didn't know the hatred that they had towards her. Even at the funeral that I did the funeral, that one of the daughters came up and went off on her mom as she lay dead. And that, you can't hurt anybody else now. What's she dealing with? She's dealing with unforgiveness. You see what I'm talking about? It's real. It's real. Some of you here this morning, you may be angry at God. God didn't answer your prayer. You pray for someone to get healed, and they get healed. They passed on. Why? Now you're mad at God. Or you prayed for that someone. You fell in love with them. You prayed, oh, God, I want to marry that person. God answered your prayer. He did you a favor. That's all I'm going to say about that. And here's the, here's the one I want you to think about. Some of you just need to forgive yourself. Some of you have done things, we all have, some of us, you've done things that have hurt other people a lot. And you have not let yourself off the hook. Today, you will. Amen? Amen? Today, you will. I'm praying today you're going to see what is impossible with man, but is possible with God. Amen. All right, are you all ready? All right, so if there's any unforgiveness in your heart, I'm praying that the power of the Holy Spirit is going to be able to minister to you. Some of you right now, already God has already picked out that person. You already see, you already know what's going on. So I want to give you some, some, uh, some biblical reasons, two biblical reasons on how, why we should be forgiving others. Number one, unforgiveness hurts us. Unforgiveness hurts us. Here's what the enemy wants you to believe, and it's a lie. And that is, if I hold a grudge against somebody, then I'm going to bring justice on them. That I, I've got it. I'm not going to let them go. All right? Well, guess what? You're the one that's held in bondage. You're the one that's in prison. All right? But you think, oh, I'm not letting them off the hook. No, you're the one on the hook. They don't even want to think about what happened. You know, whatever they did to you, whatever happened in the past, it could be five years, 30 years, whatever they did, this is not on their mind. They're not thinking about, oh, man, I really feel bad. No, you're the one that's still hung up on that thing. So it hurts us. Hebrews 11:15 says this, see to it that no one misses the grace of God. No one misses the grace of God and that no bitter root grows up to cause trouble and defile many. Let me talk about a bitter root just for a second. Because many of us are living with a root of bitterness. All right? A root of bitterness. There's an action that happens. There, there's, there's something that, that, that has happened to us and we're wounded. 
Right then, we have a choice. This hurts, I'm wounded, but God, I need your healing. We can do that, or we can play God. And we can be judge, jury, you know, and executioner, right? And that's, that really could be it. But what happens is there's, there's, when there is hatred towards someone, that hatred becomes, turns into bitterness. When that bitterness is in your life, I've taught this before, but I want you to grab a hold of this. When bitterness is, begins to grow in your life, in your emotions, your intellect, your emotion and will, right? Once it begins to grow in you, then it begins to bring forth negative fruit. All the negative emotions that, that, that all of a sudden you're spewing out. You're wondering, man, where did that come from? Uh, all the negativity, all the jealousy, all the anger, you know, all those negative emotions. What happens? That's on the, on the tree from the root of bitterness, right? And when someone gets around you, maybe you, you press it down, but if they hang around you long enough, you know, you're going you're gonna to let it out. Maybe in a story or something. Man, I tell you, this guy, he did this. Or I was driving down the road and whoa, whoa, whoa. And what is, what's happening? All this bitterness is coming out. It's a bitter root. And God is saying, don't let his grace pass you by. Because when an injury or a wound happens, then you are able to place his grace upon you, which removes a root of bitterness. All right? See, the opposite of that is when your spirit feels, the Holy Spirit is in you. Right? We talked last week about body, soul, and spirit. Okay? But in our spirit, man, when the Holy Spirit is in control of us, the fruit of that, it's love, joy, peace, patience, gentleness, goodness, kindness, faithfulness, self-control. You see the difference? You see why if you don't forgive, unforgiveness hurts us. So now God is saying, his word is saying, don't let this, this bitter root grow in your life. Don't do it. So if you miss the, the grace of God that no bitter root grows up to cause trouble and defile many. How do they defile many? Through you. You're the one is, is the focal point of bitterness. So here's, here's, here's the difference. Let me write this. Love keeps no record of wrong, but bitterness keeps detailed records of wrong. Keep that up there. I want somebody to take a picture of that. If you're living in a situation, listen to me carefully. I'm not, I'm not trying to get you in, in a fight with your spouse. All right? But I want you to grab a hold of this. But if your spouse is constantly talking about things that they have, they have done, maybe in their past, or maybe they made a mistake, or something happened, but every once in a while they're going to come up and they're going to give you a detailed record of everything that you did. That's not forgiveness. That's bitterness. They are holding unforgiveness against you. All right? Now, if that's you, if you're one that, boy, you like to have a, you know, you got the steel trap. You remember every little detail of every wrong that they ever did. Come on, Holy Ghost is already moving on people right now. <laughs> then we have to talk about it. Lord, help me get through this next point. All right? <laughs> Listen, bitterness is a cancer to your soul. It's a cancer. And man, it will eat you up, right? It eats away as, as it hurts our relationships with other people. It hurts our relationship with God. Right? It's like taking a handful of tacks and, and squeezing and saying, hey, they're not hurting me. Yeah, it is. Anybody remember Angry Birds? Remember that? You know, I mean, I, we, it was once, you know, the most downloaded, you know, game. You know, you're looking at, I mean, Angry Birds. How crazy is this? These are just Angry Birds. You put them in a slingshot and you shoot them at monkeys, you know? And they're like, Whoa, you know, and they're in the, in the jungle or in a warehouse or in a tree or they're in something, you know. And you spend your old time and you got angry birds and you got red ones and then you can get yellow ones and I don't know, all kinds of stuff. You know, they're just angry, right? A lot of times we live our life like that. We're just an angry bird. You know, I can be around some people and I'm telling you, I'm not with them three minutes and I can tell them they're an angry bird. You know, they're going to tell me a story. About what so and so did, and man, I can't believe this. And they're just angry, you know. And here's what happens in our country. Listen to me, our country is angry. They're angry, and we've got to be the ones. If we know the Word of God, and we we know how to set ourselves free through the Word of God, then we can set other people free too, right? Where we can minister to them, not dog them, 
man, let's quit being angry. And I'm telling you, the world, it's an angry place. Unforgiveness is like, this is what Anne Lamont said, unforgiveness is like drinking rat poison and hoping the other person dies. <laughs> oh, I'm going to get you. <laughs> and you're the one that suffers. So the first point, the reason why we need to let God work in our life is because unforgiveness hurts us. The second thing is because we will need forgiveness again. Let me tell you something. Let's, you know, we're not playing holier than thou. We're going to sin again. Hello? No, it's not, I'm not talking about habitual sin where we're going to you know, fall back in our you know, old ways or whatever. But you go through, you go through this week, something's going to happen, you know, and because you're just living in this flesh, you know, you're going to get mad. You're, something's going, you're just going to, and, and you're going to sin. It gives me an attitude, stinking attitude. You're like, well, you know, or you may judge somebody. That has to be a, a big sin, but you're going to sin again. And guess what? You're going to need forgiveness, right? Here's what Jesus uh, it says here, Matthew 6, 14 and 15. If you forgive men when they sin against you, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. Here's the point I need, you need to remember. But if you do not forgive men their sins, your Father, say it, uh, your Father will not forgive your sins. This is why our hearts need to be clear. Listen to me. We cannot come in here on Sundays and we can't sing songs, you know, we can't go to our care groups, you know, and, and just act like everything is fine and we're holding all this junk in us, right? We're not right with God, you know? My dad used to say, if we're not right horizontally, you know, horizontally, you're not right vertically, all right? If you're, if you're not right with the people around you, you're not right with God. Hello? All right, so we're going to need to be forgiven again. Here's the, the parable of the, uh, uh, of the servant. You remember the, the, the parable? This guy, you know, and they, they kind of put it in, um, you know, up-to-date terms. But what it is, this guy, he owed this king basically about $22 million, right? Some have given it even a lot more than that. But we'll just say $22 million. He goes to the king, and the king says, listen, you owe me. You know, and I want my money now. And he's like, man, there's no way I can pay this debt. He cried. He fell before the king. He begged for mercy. You know, he did all of those things. And while he was begging for mercy, finally the king had mercy on him. He said, you know what? Your debt is forgiven. It's clear, right? But then the guy walks out, and he finds a friend that owes him 12 bucks, grabs him by the cloak, and he says, I want my money. And the man said, man, I don't have your 12 bucks. And no, I want it now, 12 bucks. Bring it. You got to have it. He said, I don't have it, man. I, d I just don't have it. What did he do? He threw him in the debtor's prison. Now, obviously, they knew, you know, the guy. They're in the same community. And so they went back to the king and said, you know that guy that you just forgave $22 million debt? Yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah. Well, he just grabbed his friend and threw him in the debtor's prison over 12 bucks. Now, all of us are in here in our room. We're thinking, that's crazy. What a jerk. Man, he got relieved of a $22 million debt, and he wouldn't forgive a guy for 12 bucks? Man, that doesn't make any sense at all, right? Look what the, look what the Scripture says in Matthew 18, uh, 32. Then the master called the servant in. You wicked servant, he said. I canceled all that debt of yours because you begged me to. Shouldn't you have had mercy on your fellow servant just as I had on you? In anger, his master turned over the, to the jailers to be tortured until he should pay all that he owed. In other words, he's going to be in there a long time. This is how my heavenly Father will treat each of you unless you forgive your brother from your heart. Now we're really going to get to, to the next level. Are you ready for this? We want to minimize our sin and maximize theirs. Let me say that again. We want to minimize our sin. Oh, Jesus, you know, it's not that bad what I did. It ain't no big deal. You know, I mean, I've done it before, and you forgave me. And No, it's good. But, oh, you let somebody sin against you. You're going to maximize that one. God, look at what he did. You with me? Let's put it this way. We have a mountain range of sin. Every stone represents a sin that we've ever committed. From the day that you were born to the right now. Yeah. We have a mountain range. Stone by stone, sin by sin in our life. 
You may only do just a few a day, times 365 days, times, you know what I'm talking about. And then put in your crazy days. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, come on. I mean, that's in a mountain range all by itself, right? <laughs> all right? So, here's the, so here's, here's the deal. We want God to forgive us of all of that 22 million sins. This guy over here, he did 12. And we don't want to forgive him. And God is saying, you wicked servant. See the difference? And this is why it's important. Because we have to understand the grace of God. We have, to, we have to understand that we who needed a lot of grace need to be givers of grace. This church should be recognized as a fact that we are a whole bunch of people who needed grace. Right? Come on. I mean, are y'all with me? We needed grace. All right. Because we needed grace, you're going to find grace right here. All right? I'm, I'm trying to help you. So... We're going to look at that. As God has forgiven us, we then forgive. So how do I forgive? Let me tell you two things. This is going to help you. Pray for those who hurt us. Pray for those who hurt us. You're thinking, what is he talking about? Is, okay, is anybody thinking that? I must be honest. Anybody think, man, I don't, I don't want to pray for that person. They ripped me off. Anybody dealing with it? Man, y'all just trying to act, act like you're super Christian. <laughs> I got one. Thank you. Yeah, I got one who's transparent. All right. I'm not trying to point you out. Yeah, thank you. You're like, I don't want to. We can't in our own strength. That's what I'm trying to tell you. We can't in our own strength. All right. Let's don't be, listen, listen. Let's don't be a church that acts like we're not dealing with anything. Okay. We're not going to grow until we deal with our stuff, all right? So when we come and say, anybody, you want to pray for your worst enemy? No. <laughs> no. But with God's help, I can. With the Holy Spirit helping me, I'm, I'm, I'm going to try to get it done, all right? Now, look, don't pray that they'll get some disease, you know. <laughs> God, give them some hemorrhoids and make them suffer and hit by lightning, you know, something. Help them hurry. You know how we're, we're to pray? We're to pray like Jesus prayed. Come on. Now listen, listen. When they were crucifying him, when they nailed his hands and his feet, and they were spitting on him, and they were mocking him, hey, you said you're the son of God. You said you can be raised in three days or raised up to the temple in three days. Come on, come on. Heal yourself, you big holy physician, you. In the midst of all of the pain, excruciating pain, he said, Father, forgive them. They don't even know what they're doing. We're to pray like they pray, like he prayed. Now listen, I'm not minimizing your pain. Like I said again, some of you have been molested, some of you have been raped, you've been all that, all that. But in the midst of us being lied to, betrayed, they stole from us, backbited us, all of those things that happened, even if it comes to the point of even though we've been molested or whatever, even if they crucify us. Because see, when Stephen, the first martyr of the church, when he was getting pounded by rocks, Father, don't hold this against them. Father, forgive them. He prayed the same prayer that Jesus prayed while he was dying. If Jesus can forgive those who were crucifying him, if Stephen can forgive those who were killing him and maybe do you think we with God's help can pray for them as well yeah. all right you see it there's some things you know, all right Matthew Matthew uh, 5 43 it says you have heard it said love your neighbor and hate your enemy this is normal Jesus is talking he says man you heard it said love your neighbor love your friends love your family but what hate your enemy see that was a normal teaching because the Romans, who were rulers then, they had a, a, a God called revenge. And what, what their teaching was is, if somebody hurts you, you hate them. In the story. They hurt you, hate them. Over. 
That's why a lot of times they conquered people. Even when you look at the Old Testament, eye for eye, tooth for tooth, life for life. Jesus comes and he, and he tells them, I've got something, a, a new teaching for you. All right, verse 44, but I tell you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. Now that shocked that group. Those listeners were like, wait a what? Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait. Love our family, yes, hate our enemies. Okay, yeah, we got that one. No, he said, but I'm going to tell you something different. I want you to love your enemies. Pray for those who persecute you. Wait a minute, Jesus. See, God will always give you, listen to me, God will always give you an instruction that only his power can do through you. If you can do it on your own, you know, it's not, you're not going to make it. God's going to tell you, he said, I'm going to give you something that's really impossible in your own strength. That's why you need to always depend upon me. That is the spirit-filled life. Amen? So, persecute you, lie, uh, all of those things. Stephen prayed that same thing. Listen, it messed with their minds. I'm, 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 let me, let me bring, it, bring it home. A number of years ago, I was robbed. All right? Had these two guys. They, they robbed me. And, uh, you know, great experience. You know, guy had this folder, you know. Anybody else been robbed, you know what I'm talking about? <laughs> great experience, you know. But they, but they did. I mean, they, they, robbed, they, they stole 100, 100 bucks. They got my watch. They got my college graduation ring. You know, they, they got a gold necklace with Star David. Don't hate. Hey, look, it was the 80s, okay? I mean, it's, <laughs> that's all I'm going to say. Anyway, you know, and it was just a little sneer after they were walking off. Oh, got me, you know? Because I'm thinking, you know, I could jump out of my car, you know, whatever. I mean, they jumped in my car. They did. It was a crazy story. Anyway, so I, I mean, I felt violated. You know what you're talking about, you know? You, they just ripped me off, you know? My college graduation ring, really? You know, now they're going to act like they're a graduate, <laughs> right? <laughs> but here's what, here is part of the process. Listen, you go through life, you're going to get situations happening. This message isn't just for one or two situations or something in the past. You may have to deal with this tomorrow, yeah. all right? So here's, here's the deal. So they, they ripped me off, but here, here's, where, here's where my life began to change. Because, you know, I was driving around, this, you know, a couple of weeks, kind of driving in the same area just to see if I could see him. My brother actually saw him, and, uh, but wasn't able to get to him. So I had this mm, churning. And the Lord said, what are you doing? They ripped me off. And he took me to this part right here. I said, pray for him. <laughs> I'll pray for him. <laughs> Prison for 35 years. Pray they, no, anyway. Listen, when I began to pray for their salvation and pray that God would have mercy upon their souls, God let a prisoner free. The prisoner was me. My life began to change. The bitterness started coming out. The frustration came out. The, the feeling of being violated, you know, all of a sudden was leaving. All of a sudden, I got my peace back. Amen. All right, you with me? Listen, this is to help you personally, right? So you begin to pray for them. Say, God, I don't, my flesh doesn't want to, but the Holy Spirit is going to help me pray right now, right? I told you at least a story, you know, where she, she had a guy who spoke just evil things about her. And the Lord told her, bake him a cake, which was his favorite cake, right? Walk in and you take every responsibility. You take, you take it all, all the responsibility for what happened. She walks in, hands the guy a cake, him and his wife were there, children were there. And she said, I just want you to know, I forgive you and I take all the responsibility for what's happened in our relationship. That guy, you know, you would think, oh man, I'm so sorry. Think, no, he just took the cake and walked off. Right? Two nights later, though, after 17 years of, of being uh, with severe asthma, right? 17 trips to the emergency room in five years. I mean, she had severe asthma, breathing treatments every day. Two nights later, she got completely healed. Amen. Amen. And you know what she, she attributed it to? When I forgave, my healing came. Right? So that's why God wants us to forgive. Y'all with me? Come on. <laughs> 
So the first thing is, you want to pray for those who have hurt you. The second thing is, and we'll close with this, forgive as you have been forgiven. Forgive as you have been forgiven. How do you forgive? The same way God has forgiven you. He forgives you completely and he forgives you constantly. Constantly. He doesn't come back. Colossians 3, 13, bear with each other and forgive whatever grievances you may have against one another. Forgive as the Lord forgave you. What do you want when you confess your sin? You've known you've blown it, said something, you know, it hurt people, frustrated, you're going to have to go apologize and whatever, and then you come to the Lord and say, Lord, I didn't mean to do that. Please forgive me. You want instant forgiveness, right? He's saying do the same thing. Now you see why you need the Holy Spirit? Need the same thing, all right? How many times do we do it, you know? Jesus said, how many times do you ought to forgive? Well, Peter said, seven. And Jesus said, 70 times seven. 490 times, right? Let me explain it this way. In our minds, this is just one to talk. In our minds, we have what's called green rows, Right? It's, 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 a, it's an, an alley. It's like a little street in our, in our mind, right? And you, you can think of something, or, or somebody will say something, and instantly you're going to go back to a story. Oh, I remember that, or I remember something. You're going to talk about boxing, and it's, oh, yeah, I remember when we did this. It's, it's, it's like, have you seen those little deals where the little steel ball bearings are going along, and they drop off, and they come down? You see, you see that? You know how, what I'm talking about? That's how it is in our minds, and we can have, and I, I used to kid with, with Lisa when we first got married because she would, something would be said and then she would tell a story, all right? And what I used to do, I'd go, it'd be the tape recorder, you know? And I know she'd get ready to say that story. I'd go, you know, didn't make her happy, but, I, you know, I'm just saying. I, you know, you'd be around somebody long enough and you know what they, they're getting ready to say. That is the story. Here it comes, you know, and she's going to tell this story about, all right? Here's what happens whenever... The enemy brings, he fires a, a fiery dart. He'll fire that dart of what happened. And then the ball clicks in that little groove. And it begins to roll in your mind. And we're intellect and we're emotion and we're will. You with me? So now the ball is rolling. It's been dropped. If we aren't walking in the spirit and we're walking in the flesh, here's what happens. We can think about that, and it'll stir up those emotions of hatred, bitterness, unforgiveness. It's coming in. And then we let that thing roll around a while. Now, before long, we're mad, you know. And your poor husband, he's just been at work and tired, and he, it took him an hour to get home, you know, from traffic and everything else. He walked in the door, and he's thinking he's going to get a big kiss and, and a hug and, you know, and supper's on the table. And the first thing he gets when he walks in the door is, yeah, what have you been doing? Uh-huh. I remember when you, da 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 and now, yeah, and you probably, are you doing a lot da 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 now and a wada wada wada? <laughs> and that goes for the husband, too. Am I telling the truth? All right, here's the difference. When that fiery dark comes, we raise a shield of faith, right? We want to quench it. And here's what we do. As soon as that ball drops in that little slot, we say, forgiven, and get it out. Forgiven. Are you with me? I had to do that. When I had to deal with the hurt of my past and a name was mentioned, the little ball dropped in. And all of a sudden, it wants to take off rolling. I had to learn to go, they're forgiven. I'm talking about guys who I grew up with. Guys who I played ball with. You know, we were buddies. Forgiven. Forgiven. How many times, God, do I have to do this? 70 times 7. But when else I got to do it? Another 70 times 7. Why? Because every time I do it, all of a sudden, there's no sting. All of a sudden, there's no bitterness or hatred. Amen. All of a sudden, I got peace, and I'm like, who? What? That ain't nothing. I moved on. I'm healed. God, as you've forgiven me, I forgive them. That doesn't affect me anymore. The bars have been dropped. I'm not in prison anymore. Amen? Amen? 
Anybody want to get out of prison today? Come on. God's going to take us out. Here we go. I wanted to share this. The message of the gospel is forgiveness. It's forgiveness. I want you to bow your head and close your eyes just for a moment. I don't want anybody coming up for music. I don't want anybody doing anything. Right now, the Holy Spirit is here. The power of Holy Spirit is here. I don't want anybody looking around. I want nobody walking, nobody leaving. Listen. And I want you to ask the question to the Lord. This is your prayer. Holy Spirit, who? Who is it that I need to forgive? Maybe there's multiple people. Who is it? Now, you're hearing names right now. You're hearing them. Some of you, it's painful. It's painful. But this is what God's going to do. He's going to help you right now. This is where the Holy Spirit comes in. Right now, you pray this prayer, Father, forgive me of unforgiveness. Just say it, forgive me of unforgiveness. I've had to pray it many times. Forgive me of unforgiveness. It's a sin when we hang on to unforgiveness, when we won't forgive as he's forgiven us. Now, with the Holy Spirit's help, say, Father, I forgive this person. You don't have to say their name out loud, but he knows you and he hears you. I forgive them right now. There may be multiple names. So, Father, as you've forgiven me, I forgive them. Tommy, Sue, Billy, Maria, Edgar, whoever it may be, whatever. Just say it. Father, as you've forgiven me. Now, here's, listen, listen to me. Just keep your eyes closed. You may not feel like it. You may not feel like it. But if you're waiting on a, on a desire to do it, it's going to be a long time before you get this right. When you make right actions, then right feelings will happen. Okay? So we're going to take right actions right now. Father, I release them from my judgment. I place them into your hands. You said, vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. I will no longer be their judge. I will no longer convict them. I place them in your hands. And I pray your blessing on their life. Holy Spirit's going to help you pray that. I pray blessing on their life. Now, Father, bring healing into my life. Where they have wounded me, bring healing in my life. And this is where your healing begins. When you forgive, healing now begins. Fathers, you've forgiven me, I forgive them. But now that you've forgiven me, heal me. Let me out of this prison. Set this captive free. And now fill me with your spirit. Remove this bitter root in my life. Remove it. Uproot it now in the name of Jesus. And in your spirit, you say, root, bitter root, you have to go. Bitter root, you have to go. Holy Spirit. Fill me. Fill me with your peace. Heal me. Let your healing flow through my body right now. Let your healing flow through my mind. I want you to just take a deep breath and just receive God's healing. It's God's healing. And as you exhale, just say, I get rid of all those negative emotions. I get rid of that unforgiveness. I get rid of that pain because, God, you're healing me. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. And I want to pray for you. Father, we come before you in the name of Jesus. And your word is very clear. That if we don't forgive others, you don't forgive us. But Lord, we have been very honest in saying that we have been hurt and we've been wounded deeply. 
And there's things that we certainly don't understand. Even as a little child, wow, that even happened. But God, we're not even going to try to figure it out. We're just going to trust you from this day forward. And Lord, with your help, we forgive. We forgive them. We're letting it go. And Father, we're receiving. So Father, I pray for every person in here who has been in prison, that right now you will open prison doors and you'll set them free. Lord, they will never be in this prison of unforgiveness again. Father, you, by the power of your spirit, you are helping them and teaching them. They will not let that bitter root get in their life anymore. They will confess, they will forgive, and God, I thank you for setting them free. Thank you, Father, for that. Thank you for that. So, Father, only you can do this, so we commit this time to you. With heads bowed and eyes closed, let me say this. Some of you may have a difficult time doing that. But maybe it's because you've never been saved. Maybe it's because you haven't really received the forgiveness that God gives you. So right now, if the Holy Spirit is saying to you that you're lost, he wants to save you. And I want to pray for you. If that's you, I'd like for you just to raise your hand. Nobody looking around. Say, Pastor, pray for me. I need to be saved. I need the forgiveness of God right now. I want him as my Lord and my Savior. Anyone here? Anyone here? Just raise your hand. I want to pray for you. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. I want to lead you in a prayer. I don't want to pass up an opportunity, even though you may not have raised your hand. I'd like for the congregation just to pray along with me. Let's pray this prayer. Dear Lord Jesus, Thank you for loving me. Thank you for dying on the cross for my sin. I have sinned against you, and I'm sorry. I repent of my sin. I turn from my wicked ways, and I turn to you, Jesus. I open the door to my heart. Thank you so much for being a part of our online streaming. I hope you really enjoyed the message today. And I want you to just take it to heart. Whatever the Lord has spoken to you, just take it to heart. And, and I pray that if you have never received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, that today would be that day. The Bible says today is the day of salvation. So that's what we're praying for you. And if you wondered, how do I get to know Jesus as my Lord and Savior? Well, let me tell you, it's pretty simple. First of all, Jesus loves you more than anybody on this planet. So let me tell you, he's wanting you to know him. So as you come to him, we recognize, one, that we've sinned against God. Everybody has. The Bible says that all have sinned. We've fallen short of the glory of God. Well, we recognize that one. We don't have to be told that. We know that. The second thing is, it says that God demonstrated his love for us, and that's you. God loves you even though that we were sinners. That's how much he cares for you. So you got to get it out of the way. He's not judging you. He already sent his son to die in our place so that we could have all of our sin placed upon him. And then we believe we had faith in him that that's what he did. And he did it because he loved us. The Bible says the wages of our sin is death. Well, Jesus took our death sentence for us. But then it doesn't leave it as a negative. It says, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus. It's not works. It's not a, a church membership somewhere. It's not giving money to somebody. All of those are good things, but this not, does not bring salvation. So now, how do you get there? It's only in Jesus. So simply just open your heart and say, Jesus, I'm a sinner. Please forgive me of my sin. Come into my heart. Save me. Forgive me. I want to turn away from all the stupid stuff that I'm doing. And I want to turn to you. I want you to be my Lord, my Savior, the boss of my life. And Jesus, come in and save me. I want to love you. I want to live for you. I want to obey your word all the days of my life. And that's what you can do. Pray that prayer right now. And I'll tell you, Jesus is waiting. And the moment, the instant you do that, you will be saved. And my encouragement to you, find a great Bible-believing, Bible-preaching church. Get connected. Now, if you're in the Houston area, man, we would love to have you at Fellowship of the Nations. But if you're in different parts of the country or, or even around the world, find somewhere that they're preaching Jesus. And I promise you, it will change your life. Hope you can join us again next week. And uh, up until then, we'll be praying for you. Pray for us. We'd love to hear from you. Just go on our website, FOTN.org, Fellowship of the Nations, and let us hear from you. God bless you.